Americans, it is time to wake up. What I'm about to present to you is what is going to happen in America. Now, the question you're probably asking yourself if you're new to my channel, why would I trust a guy in a cutoff t-shirt who just got done working out? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would learn to trust the feeling and vibration in your body and act accordingly. Or maybe you could trust the people in the media with the suits on that are repeating the same thing over and over and over again. That you're looking at a television that they tell you a vision. That they're programming information into you and your favorite channeling information. So I wouldn't trust a word I say. What I would trust is your discernment. And I would learn to do your own research, to dive into this information, to find out for yourself what the matrix is. Everybody's trying to escape the matrix. What we did is we created our own. Where are you going? If you're escaping the matrix and you don't know yourself, you're just going into somebody else's. So what I want to share with you today is what is coming to America. That's a, that's a movie, isn't it? <laughs> what is coming? That was a great movie. What is coming to America? Okay. This is happening in the UK right now. And I'm going to show you facts, figures, numbers, logic since 2020, since the C word, the beer virus, as we look this way, there's always been another narrative going on this way. So I've been presenting this to people since 2020. I've been consistent every single day sharing this information with you guys. And what I'd highly recommend is go start to watch my videos back in 2020 and see how many things have come true. It's very easy to see by understanding macro and microeconomics, Ray Dalio's The Changing World Order, the big debt crisis, and my knowledge in banking and understanding historical patterns and coaching over 6,000 people worldwide and seeing human behaviors, that this is nothing new under the sun. What is happening is you need a shock to the system to change consumer behaviors. And what is coming for America is going to catch you off guard. The middle class is moving down to the working poor. So you have one shot, one opportunity, and this is it right now. Now, no matter what your financial situation is right now, if you're sitting there with $10 million in your account or zero money in your account, the reason why I'm so honest about my story and so transparent about my story and why I repeat it over and over again, no matter what the comments are, because hopefully you can see yourself in me. I was on my parents' couch four years ago. I had no problem with earning. I just kept use, losing all my money because I was deeply indoctrinated in the system of poverty. I didn't know how wealth works. So I've made my life's passion of taking the bottom quartile underneath the 1% and bringing as many people as possible up into the 1%. I've been transparent exactly how much I've made and where I'm at. I went from being on my parents' couch with a nice crypto portfolio. I wasn't going to touch my crypto, but I had lost everything because the C word, the beer virus shut us down to having financial freedom, equity in nine companies. On my tax records, I made about 300K last year, and I'm on my way to be in the top 1% of earners, which would be about 518,000 by next year. In my opinion, if everything goes the way I plan it methodically, right? But that's earning is different than building wealth. 11.5 million puts you in the top 1%. Now, I know what you're thinking. JV is all about money. If you understand how my life works, money is a resource. With our money, we've created over 27 team members, a worldwide academy that's created over 32 companies worldwide. We take our money and we put it into people. That's the difference maker. What we've done is we've set ourselves up outside the academy so we can continue to provide systems and resources. So if I can do it, someone with dyslexia that struggled through school, that was a drug addict 17 years ago that committed suicide on December 18, 2006, then you can do it. But remember, don't trust a word I say. Start to trust yourself and your discernment. That just came from my heart. I wanted to share that message with you guys. So if you'd like to join our community in the description down below, seven days for free in 2023, you can see how I helped over 6,000 people worldwide change their life. Heading to seventh, I think we're at 6,300 right now. So this is what's happening, family. This is facts, figures, numbers, logic, universal basic income. And I've been talking about this since 2020. Universal basic income of nearly 2,000 a month to be trialed in England for the first time. Stimulus checks. C word shuts us down. 2019, the World Economic Forum had a pandemic preparedness response. By March 2020, President Trump announced that we're in a worldwide pandemic and the whole thing gets shut down. Remember, Rosie Rio said you need a shock to the system to change consumer behaviors. So what they did was they turned the printing machine on full blast and they pumped stimulus checks. But the problem was cats were getting stimulus checks. People who were dead were getting stimulus checks. 
The problem was is the old archaic financial system and the transfer of money. So what can fix this? FedNow services, distributed ledger technology, on-demand liquidity, and now we're heading into the implementation phase. Everybody got used to being at home. Everybody got used to be taken care of by the government. And now the UK is actually trialing $2,000 a month for the first time ever. Receiving free cash from the government when nothing is expected in return might sound like a utopian dream, but it could be soon a reality from so UK people where they plan for universal basic income trial that has been published. 30 people in the UK could soon be receiving $1,983 a month if the trial uh, by independent think tank autonomy secures funding. This is what's coming, family. The middle class is getting wiped out leverage source technology, as Jerome Powell said. When you don't have a job and you can't pay for eggs and gas, which they say we're not in a recession, I'm looking around the economy. It looks like people are struggling right now. It looks like people are struggling right now. Consumer debt in America is at an all-time high, guys. All-time high. America is buried in debt. The middle class is getting wiped out leverage source technology. So if you don't wake up, and you don't start to cut out your frivolous spending, then you're going to end up in that. I'm just being honest with you guys. I want to be very transparent and very clear. I don't want people to come back to this video and be like, he told me about this. You can do this right now. You can create in the first week of our academy, you create a detailed budget. Once you create a detailed budget, you can invest in speculative assets. You'd waste the money anyways. Put it in investment uh, speculative assets and hold on to it. When the market comes back in 2024, exit the markets and follow our five pillars of wealth. Then you start to understand how money actually works. Cryptocurrency isn't going to save you guys. That is not going to make you wealthy. It's going to make you rich in a short amount of time if you do it correctly. We don't know what's going to happen, but we have a diverse plan outside of crypto as well. So this is actually from the UK. It says the basic income conversation was launched in 2019. Huh. Ironically, the pandemic preparedness response by the World Economic Forum was in 2019. And since then, we have talked of, to thousands of people about basic income. So in 2019, they were already talking about universal basic income. We weren't in a pandemic yet. We didn't really need the system. Everything was hunky-dory in 2019. And then 2003, and then it says, let me slow down, <laughs> through the pandemic, political turbulence, and the backdrop of climate crisis, people have talked to us about how basic income would reduce stress, increase their choices about how they could spend their time, and allow them to work uh, do the work that was most valuable. So in 2019, they were studying this in here. Highlight, let's look at climate crisis. Okay. They want basic income, rely off the government, and we want to do the work that is most valuable to us. What is the whole narrative around climate change, guys? Social, geopolitical, it, it's everything is changing as we know it. Well, in August 2020, Federal Reserve announced details of new 24-7, 365 interbank settlement service with clearing functionality to support instant payments in the United States. All this stuff started to come out in 2020. Isn't that ironic? It's ironic. In 2020, this was August. That was a couple months after the pandemic started, guys. March, April, May, June, July, August. In six months, this stuff has been worked on for a very, very long time. You need a shock to the system to change consumer behavior. So those who don't believe, if you go to Wells Fargo Bank, go to their account disclosures. And if you click account addenda, which is very important right here, you go over here. You can see right here, FedNow Services is a qualified direct deposit. You can't charge people fee for FedNow Services because universal basic income is going to be coming to America near you. UK will test it. We're all interconnected, guys. This is not like one. It's all interconnected. There's a big narrative around cryptocurrency right now as other countries are pushing in regulation. Whatever America does is going to do it does dues because going to control the economy. So this is in the account addenda right here. FedNow Services is a qualified direct deposit at Wells Fargo Bank, April 24th, 2023. So all of a sudden they just came up with this stuff during the pandemic. Oh, oh, let's come out. No, this has been played out for a very long time. JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Bank of America. Bank of America has the most cryptocurrency patents, blockchain patents. Wells Fargo is with R3. You can go to the R3 website. One of the Wells Fargo executives is on there talking about distributed ledger technology. We know Jamie Dimon says Bitcoin is crap and DLT and blockchain is here to stay. We're all being played, guys. 
the more we become lazier and the more we become relying on the government, the more they can control the mechanisms. Okay. So this goes back 2017. Okay. So in 2017, we we're going to play this video over and over again throughout our next journey, the couple of years, because this is what Larry Fink says, the largest asset manager in the world. And ironically in 2017, I think it was 2017. Don't quote me on that. But JP Morgan took in about 1 trillion of their deposits. So Jamie Dimon, Larry Fink actually run our country and our financial system. So let's take a look at what he says about what you need to do in order to get things to change in the direction they want it to. You now make a point of that's, a, that's an investment criteria for you. Well, behaviors are going to have to change. And this is one thing we're, going to, we're asking companies. Uh, you have to force behaviors. And at BlackRock, we are forcing behaviors. 54% uh, of the incoming class are women. We we added four more points in terms of diverse uh, employment this year. And it will, if it, it, you know, what we are doing internally is if you don't achieve these levels of impact, it, your compensation could be impacted. Okay, we're doing the same thing. And so it's just it, you have to force behaviors. And if you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race or just any way you want to say the composition of your team, you're going to be impacted. And that's not okay. So you're going to be impacted if you don't force behaviors. Okay. We need a shock to the system. Let's listen to Rosie Rios as she talks about our financial system. Listen. Give me one second here. Oh, there we go. All right. Believe it or not, continue to use cash to make everyday purchases and to hold cash as a store of value. Now, I remember in 2011, 2012, when everyone thought that Google Wallet was gonna take over the earth. Everyone thought, and actually I got the direction at that time to wind down production of coin and currency, and I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it because again, consumer behavior is hard to change. I also didn't believe it because coin and cash usage actually follows the path of GDP growth. That has been the historic trend from day one. So as we were predicting at that time, three to 4% of GDP growth, why wouldn't we predict that coin and currency usage was also going to grow? Well, I was correct. Now, when I started, there was about $835 billion of U.S. currency in circulation. When I left, there was almost $2 trillion of U.S. currency in circulation. So it basically doubled. Now, some might say that's store of value, and that is true. There was a big part of it that was store of value, but you look at coins. At the time that I started, we were producing 3 billion coins a year in 2009. Any guesses on what it was when I left in 2016? And by the way, these numbers aren't my numbers. These are the numbers that come from banks who produce the orders that come to us. So remember, I started at $3 billion in 2009. What was it when I left? Any guesses in 2016? Raise your hand if you have a guess. 16 billion. And it still continues to this day. So again, consumer behavior, very hard to change unless there's a, there's a, uh, a shock to the system. So okay. So they're, they're letting us know, guys. They're telling us we need a shock to the system. They're going to shock the living shit out of the system, guys. They're letting us know. They're not hiding this from us. It's never been hidden. It's always been in plain sight. And so this is back two years ago. This is Jerome Powell talking about a digital currency. But Given the fact that the final decision hasn't been made, you are doing, if I understand you correctly, software development, even graphic design on what a digital dollar would look like and act like. Yes, we're doing lots and lots of work. We're, we're doing stuff jointly with, foreign, uh, with other central banks. We're doing things at the Boston Fed and many of the regional feds have little projects going on. Here at the board, we have uh, a group of people who are doing software development and that kind of thing. You know, this is really just table stakes. This is understanding the technology and the possibilities so that you can really address the policy issues. You think it's likely? I think it's possible. I think it's possible. This gentleman right here showed us that basically he's worried about the middle class getting leverage source technology moving down to the working poor in 2020, 2021. You need a shock to the system. You have to force consumer behaviors. Family, you can listen to YouTubers and TikTokers all day. These are the people. Jerome Powell is the head of the Federal Reserve. The head of the Federal Reserve moves the is responsible for the movement of money, okay, and the job markets, okay. 
Larry Fink is a top asset manager in the world. He tells you you have to force consumer behaviors. Rosie Rios is the 43rd treasurer of the United States, now on the board of Ripple, who says you need a shock to the system. Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, said he's worried about the middle class getting leverage towards technology and moving down, I'm saying this, to the working poor. They're telling us what's happening. So sitting there in action is a decision. There's so much you can do right now when everybody's fearful in crypto or any type of block or any type of speculative asset or stock market. OK, the stock market, in my opinion, and crypto should not be your retirement. I don't believe in the 401k, guys. I cashed and I'm not telling you to do this. Listen to what I'm saying. Like anything that is like attached. So, for example, let me let me hear me out on this. If I'm not in control of my money and understanding what my money's doing in the capital markets, to me, that's not a retirement. We're trusting something in a four. What if the 401k comes collapsing down the stock market on the back end of this year and you're close to retire? I'm 47 years old. So I have money in a speculative asset called crypto. I have, I have a lot of money in crypto and I'm very, very focused on my exit plan. I buy when it's low right now and I sell when everybody's excited way before it gets to euphoria, way before everybody thinks they're going to get rich quick. And we're securing it into things like IUL, you know, whole, you know, cash policy insurance, which is not sexy. You're not getting huge market returns, but there's a guaranteed principle. I would rather have safety and security. We're also investing in companies, which helps us beat inflation, right? We're also in precious metals. I focus on silver for barterability. And then our number one thing is self-development. We're working harder on ourselves than we do anything else. So I hope this message reaches you well. None of this is financial advice. I'm just sharing with what I'm doing, family. You can do this. I've been very open and transparent. And, you know, with risk of people making fun of me or saying he was on his mom's couch for years, I don't care because I know I just met somebody this morning who was amazing. They shared with me they're living at their parents' house. It was at the a gym and they were like, hey, I'm, I'm on my parents' couch right now. It's been an inspiration. And I was like, good for you. Stay there as long as you can. Get a budget together. Start investing. I was inspired by the story. I was like, that's that's a noble thing to do. It's an honorable thing to do. That's what parents are for. But it's a disjustice if we don't shift the timeline, if we don't take this opportunity to shift the timeline. If you got two cars, go down to one. Do some public transportation. OK, you got a house that you can't afford to impress people you don't like. Sell that shit. Get into something you can afford. It's a little bit tough with houses right now. Stop buying shit to impress people you don't like. This is the greatest opportunity in human history. So I love you guys. I appreciate you. As I say, don't trust a guy in a tank top who just got done with a workout who doesn't edit his videos. Trust CNN with the suits. Trust your banker who's all dressed up and driving a 535 IBMW. Trust those guys. Trust those gals. Think about that for just a moment. I've been doing the opposite of the 99% for over four years now. And just radically, radically, oh, since 2017, it's radically changed my life. If you want what the 99% have, then follow what the 99% is doing. I love you guys. I appreciate you. As we always say, warriors, rise, get your shit together. Let's go.